Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Sam and Max Save the World. We're on the set of Midtown Cowboys and we're trying to figure out what to do to improvise this scene. Now, I've got a pretty good idea of what we've got to do. I think it involves the plate and the lampshade. Uh, but some of you guys have said to try using the shaving foam on the cow for some funny results. So we're going to do that. Um, and also something else to mention. Uh, I was wrong. I misread some of the previous comments. It's actually Max who's got a different voice from this point on in the game. Not Sam. So there we go. Thank you for pointing that out, guys. Uh, right, let's stop taping. Let's have another go at that scene, shall we? Places, everybody. And action! Action! <laughs> And here we go. I know you're hiding a cow. We are hiding a cow. Let's uh, use the shaving foam then and see what hey! happens. Some of you guys recommended this. Open up. <laughs> Has he got a beard? Here he comes. Everyone's uh -huh. favourite chicken. I know you've got a... Well, well, well. Who's your guest, boy? It's like spit on his face. Uh, <laughs> Santa Claus, Colonel Sanders, my agent uncle Griswold, a cow shaving cream. It's Santa Claus. It's jolly old Saint Nick. It is. Oh, Santa! I want a new semi-automatic pistol with armor-piercing bullets, laser scope, <laughs> and a picture of Jennifer Lopez engraved on the handle. Of course he does. <laughs> really, Santa Claus, hothead. You're shooting a TV show, remember? Caught. Please don't say cut. That's my job. <laughs> How am I expected to create art if you're not even going to try to perpetuate the farce? He's right, guys. You can do better than that. I mean, I thought it was... Let's get the set back the way it was. I, I thought it was pretty good, personally, but it's not what they're looking for. So, uh, let us do it again. Let's start taping. Let's have another go at that scene, shall we? See if you can squeeze in some gross-out humor this time. Ready? Action! So I've got I've got an idea. Love the theme song. Okay, so what we're going to try this time is to take the lampshade, put it on the the cow's um, head as the hat. Goodness, who left this lying here? And then I'm going to try using the plate on the um, the cow the cow poo and see if that works. So. Lampshade on the cow. Hey. There we go. Why for the party? On. Here he comes. Aha! I know you got a. Well, well, well. Who's your guest, boys? Uh, it is our chef, Abraham Lincoln. It, our chef. It's our chef. This is the French chef we hired to satisfy our inexplicable, insatiable craving for omelets and duck a la <laughs> And frog's leg. I like mine extra crispy. Oh, a French chef, eh? I love French bread and, and French fries. I went to Gay Paris one time myself, you know. It was back in my army day. <laughs> Shake it of the head. All right. So what I want to do now is try and use the plate on the cow poo. This is what I was going to do in the last one. There we go. I think, did we do that last time? I think we did, but maybe we clicked the wrong dialogue option, maybe? Say, what's this? Uh, I'm sorry, what was that you said? Uh, Mou, Moot, it's a French tone poem. Mou, Gu, Gai Pan, a delicious food. Should we do that one? That seems like the type of thing that might get him to try and eat the the poo, which I guess is probably what we're going for for the comedy factor. He said mougou gaipan. It's a French dish the chef has just made. Oh, super! I'll try some of that. Where's the plate? Uh, oh, were we supposed to give him the plate? I can't help but feel this is all terribly wrong somehow. Aha! Oh no, okay. I wondered if we had to give... Oh, <laughs> that's hmm. nasty. Interesting. That's one word for it. Hmm. There's a familiar flavor. Fennel, maybe? Kentucky bluegrass, I think. Ah. <laughs> uh, this oh, we've... moo moo whatever stuff is really good. Uh, what's it called in English? Uh... Pie. <laughs> really? Well, that's funny. It sounds just like... A... <laughs> now, now, <clears throat> better get the serious. 
Oh yeah, there we, there's the line. Nice. Naturally, I'll be in my dressing room refreshing my muse. Don't call me for at least an hour. Go on then, off you go. Nice work, you guys. Here's a clip for your reel. Thanks. Oh. <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. I wonder if we can use that that tape. And so, what do we do now? I wonder if we can use that tape in the TV in the office, maybe. Oh, again. Hi. Oh, okay. Oh no, it's in our inventory. Okay. Can we, like, pick anything up from here? I don't care if it is just a prop. I'm not touching that with my bare hands. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can take the lampshade or the plate or anything. Because those are the things we could interact with. I shouldn't fool with the set while we're not taping the show. Okay, so no. Alright, can we go through to the cooking show? Oh, yeah, we can. Nice. So, cooking without looking. <laughs> That sounds ominous. <laughs> She's here again. <laughs> what is it this time? What's the story of this show? How are you always everywhere before us? How do you do that teleportation trick where you're always everywhere ahead of us? Trade secret, honey. Okay. Uh, how do you keep it so clean in here? How do you keep it so clean in here? The complete absence of anything resembling food is helpful. <laughs> uh, are there any fruits and vegetables around here? Aren't there fruits or vegetables of any sort around here? Just the crew. <laughs> I never get tired of that one. Yeah, okay. funny. Okay, actually, no. We strive for realism, and the average bachelor kitchen doesn't contain any natural plant life except mold. <laughs> uh, nice. What's the story of this show? What's the story with this show? Cooking Without Looking? It's a cooking show aimed at motorhead bachelors who have never seen the inside of a grocery store. Wow. Is there a big demand for that? Yeah. <laughs> You'd be amazed. Sounds very niche. Uh, where's the host? Where's the host? Is he in watching the Myra show? No, he's one of the few who isn't. He got food poisoning while he was taping last week's show. Oh. Right in the middle, in fact. Ugh. Was it gruesome? Yes, and unfortunately, this show goes out live. <laughs> nice. Can we get a tape of the show? Can we get a tape of the show? This one? No. It's broadcast live. We don't tape it. Okay. Uh, fine. See ya. See ya. Probably. So, can we do anything with this show? Hi, Mom. Or can we... Okay, let's just have a look around then. There's a bucket of lard here. That's enough lard to clog the arteries of a major metropolis. <laughs> or start a circus of grease squirrels. Oddly... I the day you lost your NEA fund, Max. <laughs> That's oddly specific, Max. This fridge isn't even a fridge. It's a fake. What? Dangerous implement. Hey, Sam, can I... No. <laughs> Go on, let him do it. What's the worst that could happen? It's like a scene from Heidi. How does that bird manage to stay still for so long? <laughs> Who wants to break it to Max? Welcome to Cooking Without Looking, the cooking show for the typical bachelor kitchen, containing no fruits, vegetables, or healthy ingredients of any sort. Is it starting? The show where we take a random assortment of condiments and barely edible items and create a meal within minutes. Red guy number two. For Chuck Flagon this week, these guys. Oh God. Just go with it. Oh, um, hello. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Sam. It's great to be here. Not you, Buckethead. The audience. <laughs> oh, greetings, <laughs> worshipful fans. Remember, the only reason I'm on TV is because I'm better than you. We've <laughs> got some furious cooking to do, so let's get right to it. What oh are we making, my god. I, I don't know. A casserole, a cake, chilled summer foie gras, soup with goat yogurt. Um, a, a cake? Today we're baking a cake. Let's visit our rack of ingredients and add flavoring to the flavoring pail. I'm pretty sure that's a pot, Sam. Max, let's leave the cooking to me and the eating to you. <laughs> yeah, you can eat it. Oh, God. Squid tentacles, wombat secretions, buffalo chips, sulfuric acid, hair gel. Oh, look at the state of this stuff. Uh, let's choose all the dangerous stuff. Of course, who can forget the asbestos sprinkles? This stuff isn't just for school lunches. Real kitchens use it too. <laughs> oh, that's dark. Um, roof tile shards. Can we say enough about roofing tile shards? Obviously, we can. I mean, I'm just going for the dangerous stuff just purely because I don't know uranium pellets. More than a dash of uranium pellets. They also go great in chutneys. <laughs> 
Hey, Joe. Of course, you're going to want a few dashes of hair gel. Don't worry, bachelors. As long as you use it only for cooking, no one will think you less of a man. <laughs> and sulfuric acid? You want to use the sulfuric acid sparingly. It can easily overwhelm the other ingredients. And your taste buds and your esophagus. <laughs> your esophagus. Uh, yeah, let's, now, let's do we cook. Boil it, Sam? Right you are, little buddy. Into the oven it goes. And through the magic of TV cooking showtime, one gorgeous delicious wow. cake, ready to be binged upon or shared amongst friends. Oh boy, let's take it with us. Uh, so we've got a cake. Okay, that's quite an assortment. They must have scoured every toxic waste dump in the state. I, d I don't know if we had to make like a specific thing there or or what. This is quite realistic. Like that animatronic kid on the Cosby Show. It's a cooler down here. What's this? I think this is one of those cooler things they use on medical shows to transport donor spleens. <laughs> What's it doing on the set of a cooking show? Some knowledge is better left unclaimed. Probably true. Um, is there anything? There's nothing this way. Let's see. <laughs> it's doing that armpit fight thing. So, I mean, does she say? Can we get a tape of the show? This one? No. It's broadcast live. We don't tape it. Okay. See ya. Probably. So, I, I get the feeling that that we perhaps needed to cook something specific there, but how are you meant to know what to cook? Welcome once again oh, to Cooking Without Looking, the show where we use okay. absolutely no natural ingredients whatsoever and still make something you guys can choke down. Filling in for the inconveniently food poison Chuck Flagon, these guys. Thank you, and welcome to the show. What are we making this time, Sam? I don't know, but uh, nothing. Well, that's all we have time for today. Goodbye, adoring public. Soon I will demand tribute. So, it looks like if we click any of that, then it starts up the... Can we... Can we, like, literally go and Can we do anything? Got this cake. How about some cake? Are you kidding? I don't have time to eat. Can we go anywhere else? So this is back to Midtown Cowboys again. Oh, game show. Oh, there's another place. Who's never going to be a millionaire? <laughs> Look, Max, there's the door to my reset. Let's get oh. in there and liberate her literally captive audience. Sam, forget the hostages. There's somebody famous. It's Hugh Bliss. Hugh Bliss. Hugh Bliss? No, you Bliss. Inventor of prismatology? Help millions unlock the power of their personal color spectrums? Right. The stage magician turned happiness guru. Like we didn't have enough of those already. <laughs> I want to meet him. Fine. But if he magically pulls another rainbow butterfly out of somebody's ear, I'm leaving. Fine. You do that. Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. <laughs> yeah, we know. And you are Sam and Max, freelance police. <gasps> How do you know? Do you believe in magic? Because I do. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing here? So, Hugh Bliss, what brings you to WARP? I too am here to meet Myra. <gasps> How do you know we came for Myra? Oh, 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 don't you see? I can read your mind. As the resident Doubting Thomas of this crime-fighting duo, I consider it my civic duty to say, prove it. <laughs> okay, think of something, anything. Uh, Hugh Bliss is a big fat charlatan, pennies on the eyes of a dead mime, a random number. <laughs> 6,373,411. Point nine eight. Wow. Sam? Lucky guess. <laughs> Was it? Think of something else. Okay, uh, pennies on the eyes of a dead mime. Pennies on the eyes of a dead mime. Well, I must have been silently mouthing the words. Really? Think of something else. <laughs> the giggling. Uh, Hugh Bliss is a big fat charlatan. Hugh Bliss is a big fat charlatan. Was he right? Yeah. Big deal. Everyone thinks that. <laughs> oh? Think of something else. <laughs> uh, enough of this ridiculous farce. Enough of this ridiculous farce. Stop it. <laughs> do me, do me. Oh, oh 
my. And that's unspeakable. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you got it. Wow, you're amazing. <laughs> All right, fine. Well, see you, Hugh. Sorry to interrupt your little joy fest, but I've got a situation here. Never fear, pretty lady. Hugh Bliss is here. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, our game show host went on Myra hours ago, and he still hasn't come out. Think you can fill in till he gets back? Can a butterfly fly? Yes, it can. Oh, what do I do? When a contestant comes to the podium, just read him a question from the card. Then, when he gets it wrong, insult him and tell him to get off the stage. Oh, no, no. Prismatology teaches us to love everyone, no matter what. Right, just read the cards. <laughs> okay. I still love you. <sighs> wow. Okay, well, we're going to have to do something here as well, it seems. But we're going to leave it there because we're out of time, guys. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcadies Games, Wayne, Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, Barry Aldridge, and Hobo for all the support on the channel. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you next time.